Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio coming to you here on this Thursday. Hope you're having a good day and uh, we're helping you get on that way. We appreciate you being with us. Brought to you by our good friends from Feast Market Cellar, part of the Endeavor Hospitality Wild Club. Feast is located right next door to Southern Stone on Patterson and Rogers in Bloomington with an incredible supply of choice of great wines. Somaye on staff, incredible foods. Kyler Staley from TheHoosier.com joins us now. How are you, sir? I'm doing good this morning. How are you? I'm fine. Just trying to bat all these comments around, man, from everybody. <laughs> They're not happy. They're not happy. They're upset. A lot, of, a lot of people got a lot to say this morning. That's uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, and this is a pretty much wraps it up. A wash, re- rinse, repeat program right now. That's that's pretty much uh, Indiana. Wash, rinse, repeat. Um, Indiana athletics is not on good ground right now. If you look at both football and basketball, they are they are not in good shape. No, they're they're not right now. Um, last night was uh, not a whole lot you can say, just disappointing. Um, kind of, you know, mind-blowing to me. Um, just how, how much they've declined on the defensive end. You know, I, I talked to Keegan about this in our wrap-up last night, and I said, you know, going into the season, you knew one thing. You knew Indiana was going to be a tough defensive team. You knew that was going to be the backbone of the team. That was going to be their strength. And for the life of me, I just can't figure out what went wrong. Yeah, you want to throw in Xavier Johnson and Race Thompson, two senior leaders, two of Indiana's best defenders on the bench right now. But at the same time, it's like that mindset just went away. Um, I mean, you allow 18, 18 threes, or, and then they, uh, I think Penn State had 31 shot attempts from behind the arc. That's mind-blowing to me. Um, there was too much overhelping. I thought the straight line drives killed them last night. Um, I just don't know what to say other than that. I mean, it's just – I don't know where this Indiana team, how, why they declined like this. Um, but it's good. Their backs are against the wall. Um, they're going to have to go in and beat Wisconsin on Saturday to get some kind of hope back. But right now it's, it's very, it's very glooming right now in Bloomington. Yeah. And um, Mike Woodson using a lot of excuses. Uh, other, I, I hate there's, I'm trying to, watch the words that I use, but I don't know that there's another way to say it because again, last night there was a question and, and one of the first things out of his mouth was X and race. He's got to let go of that. You know, that that's happened. So deal with the here and the now. And I, I said earlier, it just seems like this team has a plan a and either the players are not following the game plan, which we've heard trace, say that and my question next would be why but the next part of that is okay the opposing team either takes them out of their plan a or they just simply don't execute their plan a and there is no plan b and there does not seem to be a plan b and if there is it's not being implemented i i there's just no change it's like they go out every time with okay well that didn't work damn I just, yeah, I I agree with that. I, you don't see it on the floor. You don't see a whole lot of adjustments made. Um, now, last night, you know, the second half, they did come out, and they, they did start to fight a little bit. That was probably the one little positive you can even take out of that is they, they did show some fight, but then it just went away. It's like Penn State would hit a few shots, and then it just went away. You know, all the air came out of the balloon there. Um, well, they showed fight when you're down 20. I mean, who right. cares? Yeah, what, right. What, like they what, got it with how about fighting not to get down 20? Yes, I agree with that. But, you know, they got it within five. Um, but then after that, like I said, it just – all the smoke went out. And you just don't know what happened there. You just don't know what's happened with this Indiana team. Um, whether they're following the game plan. This coaching staff, their minds, they have a good – they have a good coaching mind. I'm not – I'm going to say that right now. I'm going to be the one to defend that. I don't know why the players aren't following the game plan. I don't know why they're going away from what they are being told to do. Um, it's just it's just baffling to me how they can let up so many threes like that. And I then my I next understand. question would be if those players are allowing that and not doing what you're supposed to do, put their ass on the bench. What is Miller Cop's purpose? Please somebody tell me on God's green earth why he took up 29 minutes of space on that floor last night. He might as well have stayed in Bloomington. No one would have noticed. 
He could have been made a, making his TikTok videos back in Bloomington and no one would have cared because that is what I see them more into. Miller copped more about making his, oh, and that brings up something. I cannot believe this. I saw it last night, late last night. Did they really get into an Instagram beef with some fans? Uh, it's not fans. It's the Barstool Indiana account, which who, who, I'm going to no, be honest with you. But, but it was not the account. They they responded to that, and then it's fans started, and they started going, mm. yes. I, I, I took um, – I'm glad it, this reminded me of this. This is the this is the quintessential reason why, right here. You want to know why Miller Cop is wasting 29 minutes on the floor? In my personal opinion, well, I, and I wish I'd have sent these to uh, John, but I, I took Barstool Indiana posted a um, a meme that said basically. I'll hold it up for the camera. You can't see it listening to it. But it just said that, you know, it, it, it was a triangle. And it said, I get my hopes up on one end. I get disappointed. I start to believe again. I get my hopes up. I get disappointed. And it's a big circle. You know, well, Race Thompson responded to it just with a, didn't, not verbally. But then there were other, including Anthony Leal says, keep that same energy. And then there, was, there were responses. Hurt your feelings? Then you shouldn't be playing basketball in Indiana. Uh, someone said soft. Uh, the next person said, want us to keep up that same energy? This is why they don't need to be going on there. Um, want us to keep up that same energy from UNC game? This is a fan. Then don't blow 20-point leads and let nobody beat us at home, especially Northwestern. We pay $500 for tickets and come every game. They should not... I, I'm not saying that what this person saying is right. Why are these players engaging this on social media? Worry about the what the frick you're doing on the court. Uh, but the best one of all was my favorite Miller cop. Bunch of pencil neck clowns on this app. Look at us in the eyes and you'd be quiet as can be. Guarantee that. Then he responds to someone, you got a lazy eye, my boy. <laughs> that's I, that's what's going on though that's my that's what's going on that's what he's worried about tiktok videos and calling people pencil neck whatever clowns on social media maybe he should be worried about playing the game he's supposed to be playing that he's being paid to play for yeah i, I, I this is getting me that that got me so pissed off last night when i saw that i'm like are you kidding me that is why Indiana is losing. That is, this is why you have a team who can't focus to do their job because that's not what they're concerned about. This is what they're concerned about. And you are not going to convince me otherwise now that I've seen that. Sorry about that, Kyler, but uh, George is a little steamed. <laughs> Everyone's a little uh, stressed out right now. No, um, it's not about that. That aggravates me. I don't care yeah. who wins or loses. I'm not here for I'm, I, But... That kind of stuff, don't do that and then act like you care. Don't. I, I I just stay off of social media. Put the TikTok away. Yeah. Um stop shooting you, half court you, shots. You, Shoot you know how Mike, instead. You know how Mike Woodson is on the social media. You know he hates it and everything. And I, I do agree with a lot of that as things Mike have Woodson doesn't know what social media is. Let's be well, honest. he knows that the players are on it. And he knows I understand, it, it but he, I don't think he truly knows what social media really is. I'm starting to believe that. He might not. I mean, That's besides the point. You know, it's it, – this, this Indiana team, so let's, let's just circle it down right now. Let's just build it down right now. This Indiana team's got to turn its focus back on. This team's got to stop worrying about what's going on on social media. Miller Cop, I, I know that he's wasting a lot of minutes on the, on the floor. There's a whole lot of stuff that he's not doing. But I'm also going to say – on the offensive end, Indiana's got to do a better job of getting him involved, too. There's a lot of times where it's a little bit of one-on-one. -on -one. You saw it last night with Jalen Hutchifino, and I'll break down the film with anybody. You saw it a lot of times with Jalen Hutchifino, he went one-on-one, -on -one and he tried to do that. Um, there's a lot of times where Miller Cobb's open, and they don't find him. You know, Miller Cobb's proven that he can hit the three, and I think, you know, he's got to work a little bit harder to get open. But, you know, at the same time, Indiana's got to figure out a way to utilize their best shooter on the team. Um, this offense is very just stale right now. 
and I, it's got to be fixed. It's got to be more creative. Last year, I thought it was a lot more creative than Archie Miller. This year, I, I kind of see a little bit of Archie Miller offense in there, and I don't know what the reason is right now. Um, let's just, you know, come down to it. Indiana's one and four in the Big Ten. You can throw out a big, you can throw away hopes of a Big Ten championship right now. But <laughs> as much Big as Ten championship, that, this team's not going to make the freaking tournament, brother. Anyway, so let's just, this sounds a little weird coming out of my mouth right now, but there's still 15 games left. Indiana's got time to turn this around. They've got to, whether people want to admit it or not, people, that's just the way it is. When you look at the schedule, there's 15 games left. There's only five, they're only five games in. They got to get a win at Wisconsin. They got to they got to protect home floor. They got to beat Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin's a very very good team, one of the top teams in the Big Ten. They're got to fight through adversity and they're gonna have to come out with a win to get this season a little bit back on track. And then they're just gonna have to they're gonna have to get back to their defensive ways. They're gonna have to get back to their toughness. I don't know where that's went. I wish we had the answers to where that's went. I wish Mike Woodson would give the answers to that, but he just doesn't. He keeps it in house. I don't think um, he knows. Do Does I he know? If he knew, don't you think he would change it if he knew? There's a good possibility. Yeah, I agree with uh, that. I don't think he knows. That's the problem. And, um, it, and yeah, there are 15 games left. But when there has been zero change and zero fight, I expect zero change and zero fight. I don't expect to see anything different. I, I don't. Ex- there's been no change by the coaches. So why would I expect there to be any change? Now, they're sticking with the same players, doing the same things, making the same mistakes, same players sitting on the bench, not getting any better. Logan Duncan will not be here next year. Mark that down. He will not be in Bloomington next year. He cannot find the floor. And It just, if they were winning, it would be one thing. They are not. They're not even coming close. And I don't understand the inability, the, the, the flat-out refusal to say, time to do something different. Yeah. And you you and I both know it is time to do something different with this Indiana team. And, you know, last night, speaking with Mike Woodson and Trey Galloway, you could sense, especially Mike Woodson, I, I think he's finally hit a breaking point. And I think he's actually a lot lot more frustrated than what he has been. You can just kind of tell it was building up game by game, especially the Northwestern game. You could sense that kind of tone in his voice. This, his voice, um, this last night, it was something where, you know, he's kind of, I think he's kind of woken up a little bit. And he needs to. Mike Woodson's got to get these guys playing right. He's got to quit saying that, uh, you know, I got to get them to play right. I got to get them over the hump. It's time for him to, you know, kind of show that. This Indiana team's got to follow the game plan. This Indiana team's going to have to just be more tougher. I mean, just be more tough. That's just what it comes down to, and that's the way I see it.